the transition from the Permian to Triassic saw the demise of Glossoterates, as well as other more ancient groups of plants from the Paleozoic. However, the Triassic brought further modernization of the flora, as well as the appearance and diversification of new groups of ferns and seed plants. Relatively little is known about the plants of the early Triassic, but rich floras of the late Triassic, for example from Greenland and South Africa, contain new kinds of ferns and many new groups of seed plants. Much research needs to be done to better understand these ancient seed plants, including clarifying how they relate to each other, and their possible living relatives. Many new kinds of seed plants come into the fossil record for the first time during the Triassic. Studies of the Multino flora of South Africa show a range of different reproductive structures for these plants. Many of them are difficult to understand in terms of the living plant groups to which they may be closely related. Especially prominent among the Triassic seed plants are Choristosperms, which are particularly diverse in the Southern Hemisphere. Bennett Italians are another important group of seed plants of Apir for the first time in the Triassic. Their leaves are superficially similar to those of living cycads, but the reproductive structures of the two groups are quite different. Those of cycad are simple cones, while those of Bennett Italians are often flower-like. Some Bennett Italians flowers produced only pollen or seeds, and a few were bisexual. Cycads and ferns continue to diversify through the Triassic. This period also sees the first reliable evidence of the ginkgo lineage. Conifer-like leafy shoots are common in Triassic floras. Some of these plants are clearly related to living conifers, but the relationships of others are much less certain. Various groups of plants during the Triassic may have had conifer-like foliage but very different kinds of reproductive structures. This simple plant is known from several locations in the Southern Hemisphere, including Triassic rocks in the Antarctic Peninsula. Hexagonicolon was a flat-bodied, or talos, liverwort, similar to many liverwort species alive today. It lacked leaves and roots, and anchored itself with fine hairs, or rhizoids, which formed tufts along its underside. Like modern liverworts Hexagonicolon did not have any internal vessels for conducting water. As a result, the plant was restricted to damp habitats. Most plant fossils are formed by the sporophyte, or spore-producing, phase in the life cycle. The intervening phase, known as the gametophyte, is typically much smaller, and is rarely found as a fossil. In mosses and liverworts this situation is reversed. The smaller sporophyte grew on the female gametophyte, where it released spores. The spores grew into new gametophyte individuals. At the beginning of the Triassic, Earth's vegetation was emerging from the greatest of all mass extinctions. Many plants died out, but Pleuromea benefited from the catastrophic change. Fossils show that it grew right across the world, appearing in a wide variety of different habitats left vacant by the disappearance of competing plants. Pleuromea belonged to the lycophytes, a group that included the giant club mosses that formed the coal swamps of the Carboniferous period. Although Pleuromea was a tree, it was built on a smaller scale. It had a single, unbranched trunk, topped by a tuft of grass-like leaves. Its root system consisted of four bulb-shaped lobes, connected to rootlets that fanned out through the soil. Pleuromea reproduced with spores from cones. Some species produced several cones, but many had just one on top of the stem. This fern is similar to Cladiflebus from the Jurassic. The segment of the frond, called pinucles, are about 1 cm long, with rounded tips. These pinules have a primary vein that runs to their tips, as well as veins orientated sideways, that form a distinct network. This type of net venetation is also characteristic of the primitive seed plant Launchopterus, which lived during the Carboniferous and Permian. Also known as Dictyophyllum, this common fossil plant is often used as a geological marker, helping identify layers of rock that were formed at a given point in time. Some Thaumatopterus species straddle the Triassic-Jurassic boundary, but many fossils appear only at the point where the Jurassic period began. Thaumatopterus can be identified by the complex network of veins in its long fronds. The veins divide and rejoin, forming a mesh on the leaf surface. Dichroidium belonged to a group of plants called the choristosperms, which were seed plants of uncertain relationship found mainly in the southern hemisphere. They had fern-like leaves but produced seeds instead of spores. 
Dicroidium and other choristosperms evolved in Gondwana, which was the southern landmass of the supercontinent of Pangaea during the Triassic. A fully grown Dicroidium would have been beyond the reach of ground-based herbivores, but all choristosperms would have been browsed by animals at some stage in their lives. These browsers included the Triassic Dicynodont Lystrosaurus, whose fossils have been found in the same rocks as choristosperm remains in Antarctica. The earliest fossils of cycads date back to the Permian period, but they became more common at the dawning of the Triassic. Typically shaped like squat palm trees, cycads such as Dioaida carpidium reproduce by growing cones. Individual plants are either male or female. The cones of male cycads release pollen grains, which fertilize the female cones. The seeds then develop inside the female cone. Ginkgos are not only living fossils, they form part of an ancient group of flowerless seed plants called the gymnosperms, which also include conifers and cycads. They have a fossil history stretching back more than 200 million years. During this time, evolution has created countless variations on the theme of fan-shaped leaves. With its highly divided leaves, Bayera looks very different from its living relative, the well-known ginkgo or maidenhair tree. A shrub or a small tree, Stachyotaxis was one of the most abundant conifers during the late Triassic, but died out along with its relatives in the Jurassic. It was evergreen and had narrow leaves arranged in opposing ranks. Their narrow width made the leaves resistant to drought, in much the same way as the needles of today's conifers. Stachyotaxis produced seeds using cones. Pollen from male cones was spread by the wind and fertilized the female seed-bearing cones. The pollen granis were spherical and lacked the sacs or wing-like scales that pine pollen uses to drift in the wind. The Triassic was a time of great change for conifers. In this period, most of the earlier conifers of the Paleozoic were dying out, and new ones emerged and diversified into the conifers that survive until the present day. The small tree or shrub Voltzia belonged to one of the early, now extinct groups, but the structure of its cones shows that it had links to today's forms. Voltzia's male cone had pollen cases arranged in a spiral around the central core. The seed-producing scales of the female cones were fused together. This was a continuation of the evolutionary trend in which cones developed originally from dwarf shoots. The Voltzia sandstone or northeast France, where it is a common find. and well-preserved Middle Jurassic flora found in Yorkshire, in northern England. Jurassic plants are known from many parts of the world, but fossils from several localities in northern England have told us much of what we know about Jurassic plants. This so-called Yorkshire Jurassic flora has been studied since the earliest days of paleontology, and attempts to reconstruct extinct plants from the different dispersed parts preserved in Yorkshire flora have been especially successful. Ferns and conifers are common in many floras from Yorkshire, but cycad-like leaves are also prominent. Some of these leaves were certainly produced by true cycads, but some are Bennett Italian leaves, or may belong to other kinds of plants that are distantly related to cycads. Bennett Italians, for example, may be closer to living nettails than to other groups of living seed plants. Another interesting group of extinct Jurassic seed plants are the Catonia leans. They have leaves with four leaflets, all of which have net venation similar to that of glossoterids. Catonia leans were originally thought to be related to angiosperms, but later research showed that they lacked the key reproductive specializations characteristic of this group. The evolution of land plants and insects had been closely linked since the Devonian, but during the Meso. ZOIC several orders of insects still living, especially flies and beetles, diversified rapidly. Many of these insects probably fed on plants or on decaying plant matter, but some may also have been involved in pollination. By the Jurassic it is probable that insects were already involved in the transfer of pollen from one plant to another, bringing a new dimension to plant reproduction, and a new potential for specialization. Insects play an important role in the pollination of living cycads and nettails. There were also Jurassic Bennett Italians with both pollen-producing and ovule-producing parts. 
such bisexual flowers were probably insect pollinated. This is one of the most diverse and widespread genera of Jurassic ferns. Some fronds were vegetative, with leaflets that had broad lobes to collect light for photosynthesis. Other fronds with more slender leaflets, were fertile, with small clusters of spore-producing sacs at the end of the leaflets. The detailed structure of the sporangia shows that these fossil ferns were related to the modern-day tree fern Dixonia. At least some of the Mesozoic Coniopterus fronds also came from tree ferns, although others may have grown on plants that were much smaller. Fossil casts of aquisitite stems, witty clear ribs running along their length and more widely spaced crossbars, are frequently found in the Jurassic. They are particularly common in rocks that formed along riverbanks or the shores of lakes, where the plants probably grew at the water's edge. They look very similar to the stems of living aquisitum, but many are larger than any living species. This fossil fern is usually found as fragments of divided leaf segments, with slender leaflets attached. Occasionally complete leaves are found with several leaflets that appear to radiate from the end of a stalk. The fronds were probably produced by an underground creeping stem. The modern-day genus Metonia belongs to the same family. It has similar leaves, and also bears similar clusters of spore-producing organs. In the Jurassic period, Metoniaceae ferns were widespread. Today, they are restricted both ecologically and geographically. Just like members of the Metoniaceae, such as Phlebopterus, Dictyophyllum had leaf segments that radiated from the end of a stalk, which was attached to an underground creeping stem. However, this fern is distinctive in the way in which the veins formed a meshwork across the leaflets. The veins, and the structure of the spore-producing bodies, suggest that Dictyophyllum belonged to the family Dipteridaceae. To Dao, this family only grows in Southeast Asia. During Jurassic times Dictyophyllum was widespread, but it declined and eventually became extinct later in the Jurassic. Tadit's leaves are common in Jurassic floras. These fertile leaves often have clusters of spore-bearing sacs on the underside of the leaflets that are similar to those on modern-day members of the fern family Osmondaceae. The most similar living fern is Todia from Australasia and South Africa. Because the sporangia are slightly different in their detailed structure, the Jurassic leaves have been given a different name, Tadits. The vegetative leaves without sporin. Gia are called cladophlebis. Both extinct and modern-day members of the fern family Osmondaceae, to which cladophlebis belongs, have nonfertile vegetative leaves and fertile that have spore-bearing sacs, as seen in the living royal fern. These two types of frond can look quite different and their fossils are often found separately. Paleontologists therefore give them different genus names, Cladophlebus for the vegetative fronds with distinctive, triangular leaflets, and Tadits for the fertile fronds. The distinctive, small, tongue-shaped leaflets of Cluchia ferns are common in Jurassic floras. The fertile leaves are particularly distinctive. They have quite large spore-bearing sacs that are borne singly on the underside of the leaflets. This is quite different from most other Jurassic ferns, where the sporangia occur in a series of clusters on the pinules. Members of this genus are most closely related to the modern-day climbing ferns of the family Shiziaceae, which grow today in tropical and subtropical areas. Leaves that are divided into a series of elongate leaflets and attached to a central axis are characteristic of many Mesozoic fossil floras. They are similar to the leaves of modern-day cycads and some, but not all, are actually cycad remains. Various genera have been identified based on the shape and veining of the leaflets and how they are attached to the rotches. Pseudoctenus leaves were produced by true cycads. They have unbranched veins and leaflets that were attached to the sides of the rotches. Although fossilized examples are not as abundant as some other cycad leaf fossils, such as Nilsonia, they are very widespread. Pseudoctenus plants occurred in both tropical and temperate floras. Examples have even been found in Permian rocks, making them among the oldest known cycad fossils. Catonia is the seed-bearing organ of a group of extinct plants called Catoniales, which were abundant in subtropical areas during the Jurassic. Several seeds were enclosed in the protective, helmet-shaped, seed-bearing structures that were arranged in two rows on either side of a central axis. The enclosure of the seeds within the cupules superficially resembles how today's flowering plants bear their seeds. 
The leaves produced by the plant also had features in common with flowering plants, particularly their mesh venation. For many years it was thought that Catonia might have been a direct ancestor of the flowering plants, although this idea has now been rejected. Androstrobus is the name given to pollen-producing cones that are found together with cycad leaves, such as pseudocteni, they are thought to be part of the same plant. Their spirally arranged structure is thought to be made by modified leaves, each of which has an upturned scale at the end. The scales overlap each other to provide protection for the numerous pollen sacs on the underside of the sporophylls. The Bennett Italians were a characteristic group of Jurassic plant. S. Many species had a stocky trunk, up to 2 meters high, with cycad-like leaves and distinctive flower-like reproductive structures. A particular type of seed-producing flower, known as Williamsonia, had a central dome-shaped structure to which numerous stocked seeds, separated by scales, were attached. The entire flower was surrounded by a protective layer of bracts. Often, these bracts are the only part that has been fossilized. Several aspects of the complex structure of Williamsonia suggest that these plants may have been related to the ancestors of flowering plants. However, the exact relationship between Bennett Italians and flowering plants is still unclear. These commonly found plant fossils look very similar to the leaves of modern-day cycads. However, the detailed cellular structure of zomites, particularly the small breathing pores on the underside of the leaves, is very different. It is now known that these cycad-like fossils are from plants that also bore the flower-like reproductive structures that are characteristic of all the Bennett Italians. In fact, the majority of cycad-like leaves found in Jurassic floras are likely to be a type of Bennett Italian rather than true cycads. The genus Zomites is a good indicator of warm Jurassic climates because it occurred only in tropical or subtropical conditions. Many Bennett Italians produced fronds that were only divided once, the different types of these plants can be distinguished from each other by the style of the leaflets. In contrast to zomites, anamazomites had broader pinnae that were not constricted at the base. Like zomites, they also had the same type of breathing pores on the underside that characterize all Bennett Italians. Anamazomites were probably more tolerant of cooler climates, because fossilized remains of the leaves have been found in Siberia. The Bennett Italian plants that bore Williamsonia are also thought to have borne pollen-producing flowers that are known as Weltrisha. These flowers were made up of groups of long, leaf-like bracts that had pollen sacs on their upper surface. In some species, there were also small, stocked bodies on the upper surface that may have secreted a nectar-like substance to attract pollinating insects. The bracts radiated from a cup-shaped base, giving it a flower-like appearance. Weltrisha has never been found directly attached to a plant, so it is hard to know exactly how the flowers were born. They are, however, almost always found associated with Williamsonia, as well as with their leaves, known as tilophyllum, and there is little doubt that they belong to the same plants. This enigmatic genus was once thought to be related to ginkgo, but it is now classified in its own extinct group, the Zakanowski alenes. The leaves look superficially like clusters of pine needles, except for the fact that they fork several times. They are fused at the base to form a short shoot. The plants that bore these leaves produced seeds in loose, canelli, K structures called leptostrobus. Zakanowski alenes mainly seem to have favored warm or hot, humid conditions. Identifiable by their distinctive leaves, ginkgos were widespread and abundant in Jurassic times, but went into decline during the late Cretaceous period. Today, there is just one living species, ginkgo biloba, which is only found growing in the wild in the mountains of China. This species is probably one of the best examples of a living fossil in the entire plant kingdom. Just like its fossilized cousins, the beautiful fan-shaped leaves with many fine veins are easy to recognize. Many different species of fossilized ginkgos have been identified by the shape and number of the lobes on the leaves, and the shape of the leaf as a whole. Sometimes they are found together with small seeds that are attached to the ends of stalks. These seeds and seed stalks are very similar to those produced by the living ginkgo. In other species, there were more complex clusters of seeds that are known as carcinia. The leaves of most conifers are either short and scaly, or slender needles, both types have a single vein along their length. 
However, some Jurassic conifers, such as podosomites, had broader leaves with several veins running along their length. It was originally thought that podosomites' leaves belonged to cycads, but studies of the structure of their breathing pores, on the underside of leaves, suggest that they were conifers. The remains of conifer shoots and cones are common in Jurassic floras, and can often be assigned to the same families as living conifers. Elatides, for example, has seed cones that are very similar to the living china fir, in that they both had three to five small seeds attached to each seed producing scale. However, Cunninghamia has much larger and straighter leaves than the shoots that bore these Jurassic cones. Cunninghamia is found growing today in China and Vietnam, in conditions that are probably similar to the warm climates Elatide seems to have favored in the Jurassic.